for three years. Hi guys, my name is McKenna and I've been here for 11 years. Good morning, Tree of Life. This is Senorita Carmelita. In six years of your 40 years. I'm Vanessa, I've been with Tree uh, about eight years. Hello, Tree of Life, my name is Anthony Kelly. Um, I, I'm a, been a member of Tree of Life for three years. Hi, I'm Anita Berber James. I've been here seven years. Hi, we're the Gonzalez family. We've been here 15 years. My name's Steve Moore. I've been here 22 years. Hi, my name is Nancy Modal. I've been with Tree of Life 16 years. Hey, we're the Miller family, and we have been here at Tree for nine years. Hi, I'm Robert Miller Jr., and this is Robert Wayne Miller III. We've been here almost a year. It's been wonderful. Hi, I'm Lily, and I've been at Tree for eight years. I'm Laura, Olivia, Gabby, Hermes. And we have been at Tree of Life for three years. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Maria Martinez. I'm Rick Martinez. We've been here at Tree of Life for nine years. All right, ready everyone? Yeah. All right. Hi, we're the DeMaries. We've been blessed to be coming here for seven years, calling this our home. Hello, Tree. We've been here 11 years, and we still like it. Happy anniversary. There's unity that brings victory. There's unity, Father God, that brings freedom. And so we must stand together, Father God, united in Jesus' name. I'm in the image of the King first. I'm, at, I'm in your image, Father God. The other things do not matter. What I look like, where I live are insignificant. First and foremost, I'm in the image of God. First and foremost, mankind is in the image of God. It matters not where they live, how much they make, how old they are, what gender they are, what country they're from, what culture they're from, what language they speak. They are in the image of God. Life can rise up, Father. The life of God can rise up from the image of God. The life of God comes from the image of God, Father God. The Word of God comes from the image of God, Father God. The action comes from the image of God. I thank you, Father God, that we act like people that are made in your image, and we can make a difference. We can make a difference, Father God. Thank you. I've been feeling the love here at this church since I walked in two years ago, and I hope you can all come in and feel the love too. God's love is here in this church. For us, tree means family. It doesn't matter what, what road you walk down, we're here to welcome you with love, and you're part of our family. Happy anniversary to Tree of Life and to our pastors, the Duncans. I want to say thank you so much for leading the way. Thankful for Pastor Don and Karen for their devotion. Uh, I remember them starting out with nothing. Been a blessing for me, changed my life, and made me a better man. In Jesus' name. Um, tree means that I always have a loving family that I can count on that's not going to judge me, that's helped me uh, find who I am in Christ, um, and that's always going to be there to support me and lift up my, my littles and everybody else that I bring with me. Thank you so much, Tree. We love you. We are so grateful to be here, and this is our home. This is, this is our family, yes. our, our Tree Amen. family. And so, um, place of worship, and where we experience God and the Holy Spirit, the love of Jesus. Yes. And we just want to say happy anniversary, Tree, and we feel so blessed to have the Duncans as our pastors. This church has been a place of great blessing and healing to my life, and I just feel so blessed to be here. We also want to say that every time we come, we receive a word from God. We find comfort, we find healing, we find hope, and we, we are always so blessed coming here. Um, not only have we been blessed, but also our family in Cuba uh, through our pastors as well. So we're so grateful and we're so thankful and blessed that we have them in our lives and that we have this church to come to every Sunday. Hey, we're the Mercer family. We've been with, with Tree for over six years and we love Tree. It's our, it's our family. Now, we're the Jackson family. We've been here for 10 months now. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for loving us. I am so glad to be a part of this church and organization just to celebrate and praise God. Um, I like everything about Tree, just the family and how family oriented this church is. Um, I've been coming here since I was five years old, and so um, uh, 
I've really loved growing up here and just I'm super proud of myself and who God has made me to be. A uh, tree is meant uh, an anchor for hope and uh, family. And uh, it's been an awesome 13 years and we look forward to seeing what God has for the rest of us. So happy anniversary. Hi, we're Josh and Amy Bacon. We've been coming here three years and we loved every minute of it, every every service, every song. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary life. tree. We've never seen the church universal shut down like it's been shut down. But you've not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. That the enemy's ploy was to shut churches down because he cannot stand against a church walking in the power of God. He cannot stand against the people of God rising up in unity, Father God, in diversity, and declaring the wonderful works of God to every culture, every language, every people group, Father God. He cannot stand, and we declare right now, the gates of hell cannot stand against this church in Jesus' name. The gates of hell cannot stand. I don't care if we're in a pandemic. The gates of pandemic cannot stand against this church. The gates of COVID-19 cannot stand against this church. The gates of prejudice cannot stand against this church. The gates of discrimination cannot stand against this church in Jesus' name because we are a church walking in the power of God because of the unity of the people and the diversity, Father God. We thank you, Father God, and no demon, devil, gate of hell can withstand a church walking in unity and in the power of God. We just wanted to say happy anniversary, Tree. We love you. Happy anniversary. <laughs> and happy anniversary, Tree of Life. Happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. Happy anniversary, Tree of Life. We love our church can't wait for the next 40 years. Happy anniversary. And happy anniversary, Tree. I'm so excited to uh, be able to celebrate this with you. And happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. It's been a great blessing. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Tree. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for all you do. Have a great another 40 years. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy anniversary, Tree of Life. 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 Hey, Tree of Life. Happy 40th. Happy 40th. We love you. So, happy anniversary, Tree. 40 years. We're, this church has been such a blessing to our life. We're just grateful to be here. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. And happy 40th anniversary to this wonderful church, in Jesus' name. Happy 40th anniversary, Tree. And happy anniversary, Tree of Life. Uh, thank you so much, Tree of Life, and happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We know you're working. We may not see it, we may not hear it, we may not know it, but we know the Word says you are working. So we hold fast to the truth of your word. When we've done all we can do to stand, and it may get worse before it gets better, but we know this truth, Father God, that you are working all things out for our good because we love you. And so we thank you for it, Father God. Whether it's our home, our personal lives, whether it's our business, our place of work, whether it's our church, Father God, you care about every aspect, Father, of our life. You care about all things. And so, Father God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. church. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's worship God this morning. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your light. You've always been with us.
on, do you believe that this morning?
Think back over those moments and what he's done for you today. I, I just encourage you to take a moment right here and right now and maybe just close your eyes and think back on the faithfulness of God. That time when doctors said you shouldn't have made it. That time when finances said there was no possible way you could pay the rent this month. That time when you were so far from God that you thought that you couldn't come home to him. Come on, this is the time when we remember God's faithfulness and when we rehearse his faithfulness, we know that for certain he's going to take care of us in this moment and in the future that's to come as well. Let's sing this together. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising 
setting sun to the setting sun, I'll praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me.
There is a stirring that my heart can't feel. There is a breaking, there is a shifting in the air. There is a changing, there is a stirring. Come on, can we sing that one more time? There is a breaking, there is a shifting, there is a breaking. There is shifting in the atmosphere. There is a changing, there is a stirring that my heart can feel. You know, today I just want to remind you that something changes when you praise the name of Jesus. I think about Paul and Silas in the bottom of a jail sitting there chained and bound but they chose to praise God in spite of their situation and in the midnight hour their chains fell off and God set them free can I speak to you today if you feel like you're in the midnight hour if you feel like nothing's gonna change if you feel like you're alone and by yourself that now is the time to praise because walls begin to break chains begin to fall off things begin to shift destinies begin to realign when we choose to praise the name of Jesus. So if you need something from God today, would you lift up a shout of praise? Would you lift up a shout of praise like you believe that walls are coming down in Jesus' name? Amen. Come on, we believe that today, that walls are falling in this place as we praise the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen. Come on, let's lift a shout of praise to him today. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, we're so glad that you're with us today. You may be seated. We truly believe that in the presence of God, things begin to change, and we're so excited that you're with us today. We believe it's not an accident that you're here. Whether you've been here for 40 years or whether it's your very first time, we know that God ordained this moment just for you because he loves you that much. And so, hey, if it is your first time, whether in person or online, we know you didn't just drive by. We didn't know that you, we know that you didn't just scroll past We know that God planned this because he cares for you. And we hope that you'll connect and be a part of what God's doing here at Tree and see what he can do in your life as well. Hey, I want to remind you, as always, share on social media what God's doing in your heart today here at church. It may be as simple as taking a selfie. It may be as simple as writing down your notes from service and posting them online so people can see it with the link to the stream. Something that helps people engage. Something that helps people get hope into their soul. Because how many of you know our world needs hope more than ever before? And you can do that with simply sharing something other than a cat meme on social media. And I'm sure that the people in your friends list would appreciate that as well, a little change of pace or something like that. Hey, I do want to remind you today that we have the privilege of being generous. And I say that that way for a reason. And I love the story that Jesus tells in Mark chapter 4. It's called the parable of the sower, is what we call it. And He talks about this farmer who goes out to plant some seeds. And he talks about all the different types of soil that the seed falls on. And then finally he talks about there's this good soil. See, there's some soil where it gets choked out by the weeds and the cares of life, but there's this good soil. And when the sower plants in that that soil, something begins to happen. And it says that this crop is produced and it's up to 30 and 60 and 100 times what was even planted. That's an incredible return. And I want to remind you today that when Jesus is talking about that, he's not talking about finances. He's talking about spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so many times when we think of generosity, we're thinking about finances. But I would like to reframe that for you and just say this today. When we're generous with our finances, when we obey the tithe, as we see in Malachi 3.10, when we give above and beyond that, the way that God sees it is we're spreading the gospel. And there's something so incredible that happens that's beyond any benefit that a financial return could ever provide. And that's that you can see people who gave their lives to Jesus as a result of your generosity begin to reach more and more and more people for him as well. That you could see 30 times the people, 60 times the people, 100 times the people, the people that you were generous so that they could receive Jesus in this church service. What happens when they reach the people around them? And we see more and more people encounter the life, love, and power of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you today, generosity is not really about finances. 
It's about reaching people for Jesus. And if you'd like to do that today, there's four ways that you can do that. Number one is online at treeoflifechurch.org slash give. You can also give via the Tree of Life app. It's really simple to download in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Just search for Tree of Life Church NB and you'll find it there. You can also text to give. Just text the word give and the dollar amount to the number that you see on screen. And then finally, if you wanna give in service, grab an envelope from the seat back in front of you. Fill out your info there. Hang on to it hang on to it until the very end. And then as you exit, you can drop it in the offering boxes at the back by the doors. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this concept of generosity being so much more than just a dollar amount and so much more than us giving so that we can receive a financial blessing. God, we give so that people would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that every dollar that we've sowed in generosity I believe that we'll see some benefits on earth. Sure, I, I, I certainly believe that. But God, I pray that when we stand before your throne in heaven one day, that we see those 30 people, those 60 people, those 100 people that gave their lives to you because of our generosity. God, that we see the, the people whose lives have been touched, that we never met on earth, but our generosity made a way for them to encounter your life, love, and power. Father, may we give from that place today. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen, amen. Hey, listen, God has so much in store for you today. But before we move on, let's check out some announcements on Tree TV. Hey, everybody, my name is Daniel. This month, we are celebrating Tree of Life's 40th anniversary, and we're so excited that you are here to be a part. If you'd like more information about Tree, fill out our Connect card online or from the seat back in front of you. We have an amazing experience for your kids. Infants through eighth graders can join us for a service created just for them every Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. Our middle and high schoolers have Life Night every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Here at Tree, we want you to know that you belong. Whether you've been attending for a few weeks or a few years, join us Sunday, September 5th at 9 a.m. in room 201 for our You Belong class. Here, you will find out who we are as a church, where we're going, and have an opportunity to make Tree of Life Church your home. Sign up on our website, on the app, and you can even stop by the Connect Center today. Are you new to Tree or new to your faith and wondering what's next? The next steps is for you. During this three week class, you'll learn more about getting to know God, growing healthy relationships, and how you can make a difference in the world around you. This class will take place in September, starting Sunday the 12th in room 202. Register on our website or app today for more information. As part of our 40th anniversary, we will continue celebrating with giveaways all month long. Today, we are giving away exclusive Tree of Life keychains. Stop by the tables in the lobby to pick up your gift after service. Also, don't forget to check out all the new anniversary merch available for purchase in the main lobby while supplies last. Happy anniversary, Tree of Life Church. Pastor Don and just me, we are so proud and thankful for you guys. Yes. It's been 40 years. That's a big deal. And we know that God's going to continue to be faithful to you guys. Yes. You know what makes a great church is not the building or the location. It's really the people. And you all have some of the best people on the planet. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you again. Hi, my name is Monica Borrego. I'm the executive director of the New Braunfels Food Bank. I'd like to take a moment to say happy birthday to Tree of Life. Uh, 40 years of excellence, it's a great time to celebrate. And just, we could not have gotten to where we are today without your support. Um, so we're truly happy to be included in this celebration with you. And we thank you. It's been awesome to see how we all evolved through the pandemic and we were able to serve so many families in partnership with Tree of Life. And we are excited to see what is coming. Congratulations, Tree of Life. Man, you guys have made it for 40 years. That's an incredible testimony to the goodness and faithfulness of God. You guys have stayed faithful to the call of God and accomplished what God's purpose and design was for this church. You have a great heritage. Yes. So we just encourage you, stay faithful to the call of God. Stay faithful to complete the mission that God gave you to New Braunfels. I just think the next 40 will be even better. God bless you guys. Congratulations. Hey, your next is your best. We are having a special morning of worship next week during our August 29th Sunday family service. This special service will mark the release of our brand new Tree of Life worship album, which will be available on all digital streaming platforms as well as YouTube. 
Also next Sunday, we'll be holding a water baptism directly following both the 9 and 11 a.m. services. Baptism is an outward expression of what God has done in your life. It is a way of publicly declaring you're all in for Jesus. You can sign up online or by visiting the Connect Center in the main lobby directly following service. Are you looking for ways to build life-giving relationships and find encouragement? We believe tree groups are a great place to start. While tree groups happen all year, we are excited to announce our next round of groups starting in September. You can visit our group link tables after service today or visit our website for more information. All right, Tree of Life, God has a message just for you this morning. So take out your phone, open up Live Notes, and follow along with our pastor. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning or... Have the Lord in your house. <laughs> For those watching online, we're glad that you're with us as well. Uh, we just appreciate you guys taking the time today. A lot of places you could be. I can't think of a better place than really connecting with God and God's family. Amen. And I just want to say, great is his faithfulness. But I love that song. Where would we be without the faithfulness of God? I don't know about you, but I sure needed him this week. Come on, right? And he was right there as he always is. And so it's great to come and just spend some time in worship and word and just celebrating what God's doing and what he wants to do in and through all of us. Hey, before we move on, well, let me say this. Happy anniversary month at Tree of Life Church. Come on, somebody. No month. It's funny. It's funny because it's really like a birthday, right? And I know a lot of you have birthday months, right? Just every year is your birthday month, right? That's what it is. So uh, we're celebrating the rest of the month. We got one more Sunday, of course. And I love the congratulatory videos you saw, Pastor uh, Pastor Josh and Christina, Pastor Josh served as our youth pastor for a while, student ministry pastor and outreach pastor, doing a great job out there in Scottsdale, Arizona. If you're ever out that way, definitely look them up. They'd love to see you. Uh, Jessamy and I have had the privilege and honor of going and ministering twice out there. We sure enjoy it, and they're doing such a good job. Pastor Mark and Dee McKinney, if you were here on the anniversary service, Pastor Mark is one of our overseers. He spent nine years as a children's pastor here, and then he was administrator, singles pastor, all that. And so they have a great church out in North Carolina. So we have, we're blessed to have people all over, amen, all over that have come through here and God's assignment, you know, and that's just how God works. He moves the pieces around as he wills. Our job is just to be obedient to him, amen? To be sensitive, leading, and guiding, and that's what we all want. We should want to be in his plan and his place when it's his time. And so this morning, uh, as we are celebrating 40 years and we're talking about, we just saw a couple of transitions that happened there on the screen. Uh, we do have a transition that's taking place this morning. And so I want to let you know about that. Uh, we just have been so grateful, so blessed these last three plus years to have Pastor Janae uh, Fuller on staff with us. Janae, could you stand up? Spencer, could you stand up for a second? Hey, let's give him a big shout out. If you don't mind, let's celebrate him for a second. Yeah. Why don't you come up here? Why don't you come up here, both of y'all? Yeah, I know, I, that wasn't part of the plan, but I am still the boss. <laughs> well, not technically, but hey, we're just pretending today, right? So, and uh, sorry, Spencer. <laughs> I still want you to take me to play golf. And uh, so we're blessed. We've been blessed. Uh, Janae has actually been a part of this church since 1988. I didn't want to give away like how old you were then because people will do the math and you know how that is. And uh, so she's been a part of this church for such a long time. So it's been a real privilege and a blessing to see her come up through the children's ministry and come up through the student ministries and be a product of the house. And then it was great three years ago, three and a half years ago, to have the discussion with her and Spencer about what, what might it look like. Uh, they've been in the mission field in Macedonia for a while, and they have uh, just served God anywhere they've gone in, in all kinds of capacities. Uh, she was the director of the uh, New Braunfels uh, Kids Kids Club. I was like, I, my mind went blank on that. Kids Club for like seven years, right? Six, seven years. And so before I could finally wrestle her away from all that and all my begging, pleading, crying worked. And uh, no, it was the plan, plan and purpose of God. And so for the last three plus years, what a great blessing she's been. Uh, she's helped us establish things like our special needs ministry. She's been real instrumental. Our sensory room, as well as Lisa Voigt here on staff. Uh, she's done a great job getting our ministry safe program up and all our volunteers involved in that, keeping your kids safe, safety first, so, and many other things. So uh, we've been blessed in the three plus years that you've helped us be a blessing here. You've left us better than you found us, and that's how God works, right? And now on to the next season that God has for you and your family. Uh, excited what that looks like. Uh, I just want to give a shout out. Uh, their oldest daughter, Kate, just uh, three weeks ago, <laughs> anniversary weekend, swam in the state swimming meet. She was invited to be a part of the state meet, and uh, I asked her if we have, uh, yeah. 
We could give her like a tree of life swim cap or something, you know, just kind of rep the church here or something like that. It didn't quite work out, but uh, so super proud. So a lot of fun things ahead for you guys. And so thank you and looking forward to see you around here. Uh, so they're transitioning uh, on into that next season God has. Uh, I want to make another uh, introduction. Most of you doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyways. So our transition is going to flow easily, seamlessly. Uh, there's such a great team that Pastor Janae has built and developed. We're super, I don't know if you know this, we are really blessed with our teams here at Tree of Life. And, and I, I, I say that very arrogantly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I say that like, hey, I want to brag for a minute because I've been a lot of places and talked to a lot of guys and I'm just like, I come away, we were in Birmingham this uh, last week and places, and it just makes me think, how blessed are we here with all the wonderful people we have? Great team, children's team. Uh, Pastor Janae's in a good job, leadership development. And she and Pastor Dave, Pastor Dave, why don't you come up here for a second? Pastor Dave, come stand over here. Um, come on, hurry. Come on, let's go, man. Come on. What are you doing? Come on, fit pastor. Let's go. Get over here. All right, stand right over here. Uh, pastor Dave and Lala and his family have been here nine years on staff, I think about seven seven. Uh, he is a uh, pastor of the student ministries. And, and these two have worked together for the last three plus years. Uh, a great working relationship. What a great team. And integrating both the tree kids ministry and the tree student ministry. So we have pretty much a seamless zero to 18 year old ministry, which is fantastic for kids and for parents. And so they've done a great job. So what's going to happen in this transition uh, moment is Rather, Pastor Janae transitions out. Pastor Dave's going to get oversight. So he's like, hey, thanks a lot, Janae, right? He's going to get oversight of not only Tree Student Ministries, but Tree Kids. And it's a, such a great fit. It's just going to be um, really smooth. It has been. The teams that are in place are, are great and ready to continue to minister to your kids. I want to let you know you're in good hands. Amen. You're in good hands. We're blessed here at Tree of Life with such great teams. We're thankful for it. So... We're excited what God has for you and uh, taking that next step there and giving oversight to the whole area of ministry. So thank you uh, for your willingness and obedience and being a part of what God's doing here at Tree of Life Church. So guys, if you don't mind, uh, could you stand for one more minute? I want to pray over Pastor Janae and her uh, wonderful supportive husband, uh, Spencer, who basically, I mean, you, thank you for allowing her uh, opportunity so many nights and weekends and things away from the family. Uh, so we're, thank you. We're blessed for that too. Pastor Dave, why don't you come over here? Let's pray. Join me as we pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful gift that you've given us in the Fuller family. We thank you, Father God. It's all five of them, Father, really, that had been called into the ministry, if you will, Father God. And we know everything operates in times and seasons, and you determine that. You direct that. We're just to be obedient in those moments, Father God. We do everything that we can to the best of our ability, Lord, in, in those moments, and Father God. And then when you speak or you move and, and you start move us, to, move us to another season, then we just say, here we are, Lord. Send us, and we take that next step. We thank you, Father God, for their investment in all of us. We thank you for their prayers and for their serving, sacrificially for their giving, Father God, for the wisdom and the counsel and direction. We thank you for the anointing on their lives together. We thank you, Father, for them together as a married couple, their family being strengthened, Father God, during this, during this time. Uh, we thank you for the calling and giftings on Pastor Janae, Lord, as she's invested in all of us and, and positioned us for a great future, and we're grateful. We know the seeds that they have sown, Father God, now they'll reap a harvest in their life, Father God, as they step out into this next season. You've opened doors. You've made ways, Father God. You have, have ordered their steps, Father God, and they are obediently following them. So the blessings of the Lord overtake them. That's what your word says. When we're obedient, Father God, we will eat the good of the land, and the blessings of God will overtake us. We thank you for your many, many blessings overtaking their family in abundance. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that just the seeds that have been sown, that, that those will continue to grow and flourish. And we thank you as Pastor Dave steps in to give greater oversight to both areas of ministry. Lord, he's surrounded by such a great team. We really are blessed with all the people that are serving in the capacities of children's ministry and student ministry. So we thank you that it's seamless, Father God, because first and foremost, Lord, your heart and your purpose, uh, Lord, is what, is what is in them, Father God, and they do everything unto you. We thank you for those that will step up, Father God, and help and support and be a part of. Now, this is their season. It's a time for others to step up and get in the game to use their gifts, talents, and abilities in conjunction with those that are there, Father God, so we can take this next step into this amazing future that you have for us. Lord, as we uh, just pray a blessing over them, Father God, there aren't enough thanks, Father, but we leave that to you. You are the rewarder. They sought none, but you are faithful God in rewarding your faithful people. And so we just pray a blessing over them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank them one more time, everybody. All right, you can be seated. You can be seated. You can be seated. We're not praying over you, Pastor Dave. You're not going anywhere. So. <laughs> hey, we really are blessed with such a great team, and I hope that um, you realize that if you don't have kids over there, if you get a chance, you see one of the 
the, the student ministry team members or their Tree Kids team members, just thank them on behalf of what they do. And I just, what a great ministry student ministries and ministries to our kids are in the world we live in today, amen, just imparting the things of God in them. So if you're looking for a great place to serve, may I just give a recommendation on one of those two areas and invest in our future in that way. We're raising up world changers, ones that won't be changed by the world, amen. And the world is changing, is it not? I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna watch the news again. I don't even wanna turn on, that's a big deal because I'm too much of a news hound or whatever. And, uh, but we are in a changing world. All the more reason to celebrate an unchanging God, the sure foundation. Amen? The same yesterday, today, and forever, and so we're thankful for that. Um, praise the Lord. Hey, a couple things for me. You know that, uh, I don't know if you know this, I, and I was uh, looking at my notes and stuff. It's probably in Tree TV, but water baptism is next week. We have a water baptism, so I want to encourage you, if you are new in the Lord, maybe you've, you've rededicated, recommitted your walk with him, maybe you're at a place that you're, you're wanting to do that, may I just suggest that next week is a great week to do that? I think as we're wrapping up our 40th uh, anniversary, we're looking ahead to this new season. Make some commitments. In fact, we've been talking all month. Uh, we've been talking about the measure of a great church. We started, and you heard our founding pastor. We'll have a plaque out there shortly on the wall. But the measure of a great church is its people, and people connecting and, and doing their part, working together. In fact, as he said it and, uh, a couple weeks ago, he said, we all come together. We have to identify with a unit and all of us working together to go forth and set the captives free. Water baptism is identification. You're identifying first and foremost with Jesus Christ, amen? And then you're identifying with a changed life of the message of salvation and forgiveness. And then you're identifying with the rest of the body of Christ. So I, I just want to encourage you. Maybe you're making a new commitment. Maybe you're realizing or, or beginning to think that this is the place for you or you're putting roots down here. Maybe you had a, recently had a changed life. I would encourage you to get signed up and be a part of that. We have room for you. Amen. All right. Hey, I got other things to talk about. I'm sure there's never ending things to talk about because this is a church on the move, on the go, doing things for God. But one more thing I want to say, we have keychains for an anniversary. I love them. They look awesome. So on your way out, grab a keychain there. It looks really great. And um, so it won't help you find it if it's lost. <laughs> but anyways, it's not one of those that'll beep when I live. I don't know where I set my keys all the time, right? Maybe we should have done that. But nonetheless, it'll be great for you. Matthew 16. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Matthew 16, here we go. Time I have left, I want to share something on my heart. We're keeping in the series called The Measure of a Great Church. It came from a series that the founding pastor, my dad, uh, Pastor Don Sr., we call him that, did in uh, 1995. It was actually the year before he went on to be with the Lord. And I, um, I was one of those moments, uh, listening back to the series, I've listened to it many times, as he really felt that God had really established something in him for the church. Here's where, who we are and where we're going. And that happens throughout seasons as a church, but in that moment, he really felt it was important to convey this message, this series to the church. I believe he didn't speak it just to those present. I believe he prophetically spoke something into our vision, to our heart, into our future. And so I've been trying to share bits and pieces of that with you as I feel it's the same. I believe I have the same heart, same vision as God had established in my father to carry on the mission of the church. We're going to start Matthew 16, 18, realizing, reminding ourselves that the church is not the church. It's not a man's church. It's God's church. It's really a church that Jesus says is my church, his church. And we'll see it right here in Matthew 16, 18. It says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. Rock what rock? The rock of the revelation, because Jesus just asked, who do men say that I am? And they rattled off, some think you're one of the prophets and Elias. And, and Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter being bold, everybody else, like, I'm one of the other guys that would wait for somebody else to talk first, right? I'm like, that guy, you go ahead, Peter. I don't think he needed any nudging, and he jumped in there and got it right this time. Good job, Peter, you got it right this time. And he said, you're the Messiah, you're the rescuer, the redeemer, the soon coming king, the savior. And so Jesus said, man, you didn't learn that here. You got it from my father in heaven. And so uh, he spoke to him and said, based on that revelation, Peter, I'm going to build my church. It's the church of Jesus. Can I just say, especially today, what a great reminder for us. This is Jesus' church. This isn't a man's church. And, and can I just be so bold in a moment because I'm, I'm going to, and I'm going to do it anyways. I don't need to ask you that, right? <laughs> this isn't the government's church. This isn't a man's church. This is not a church to be legislated. God already established and ordained the principles by which a church is to operate by. And so this is Jesus' church, and he established how he wanted his church to operate. And who are we to be so arrogant to try and change it? Like we think we know better, right? Like we think we got it figured out. Let me help you out a little bit because it's now 2021. You wrote this a long time ago. You know he saw everything from beginning to end. He wrote it right the first time, the only time he needed to write it. This is Jesus' church. It's our job to find out what his heart is, what his purpose is for the church 
as a whole, and then each church is unique in and of itself, its call, its mission, its makeup, based on culture and resources and where they, where they are, generations, et cetera, et cetera, leadership. This is Jesus Church. So I got a little forceful right there. Wow, I got to back off a little bit here. It's kind of like it, though. It felt good. I don't know. I may, I may keep that up. So he says, I'm going to build my church on the revelation that you have of who I am, who I am, not who man thinks it should be. So I want to share that with you. Uh, it goes on to say this in verse 19. Uh, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Keychain, you need it right there. <laughs> and uh, we'll give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Basically saying, I'm going to give you not only a mission, I'm going to give you the power to fulfill it. I'm going to give you the authority to fulfill it. So it just stands to reason, does it not? If it's his church and it's his plan and his power, we ought to be a part of that <laughs> instead of trying to create our church, our plan, and our own power. Amen? And so that's what we're about, trying to be about. That's part of what I'm hoping that you catch the heart and spirit during this series. Let's take a look at Matthew 16, 18, and the amplified version. Here's what it says. And I tell you, you are Peter, Greek meaning Petros, a large piece of rock. Like, you're strong. You're a good man, Peter. You can do a lot of stuff. But this is bigger than you. And on this rock, the Revelation Greek, Petra, a huge rock that cannot be shaken. Man will come. Man will fall. But this will last forever, and this I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it, shall not overpower it, or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. That's good news. Only, however, if it's operating on those principles. So that really is the caveat, if you will, that what needs to happen. And so that's what we're endeavoring to do. I want to just remind you of that. It's, it's great to have that reminder. This is his church. And we have a mission. We're moving forward in a church on mission. A church on mission cannot be stopped. On his mission cannot be stopped. And let me just say this. It's not how many of our seats are occupied with people, but how many people are occupied with Jesus. Amen? And so we're just encouraging you, if this is home, make it be home. Get on board. Get a part of what God's doing here and through Tree of Life as we're on mission with him to change this world for maximum impact. And so that's what we're about and so uh, let's take a look at Acts 19. So we're going to move on to today, Acts 19. And uh, this is the Apostle Paul writing to a church in Ephesus um, in modern-day Turkey. It's located there, still a city, Ephesus. I'm looking forward to seeing it one day. And, uh, but in Ephesus, he writes this. Ephesus had a church, a big church. Well, actually, it didn't. It, it did in later writings, but it, it didn't have a church until Paul plants one. And when he's writing this, it's kind of, you see, the, be the beginning of the church here. But Paul writes this, and he says, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months in Ephesus, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate because they refused to believe and publicly maligned the way, the way being followers of Jesus and, and following the teachings of Jesus. So Paul left them, and he took his disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall, Tyrannus. And so let me just, uh, Tyrannus, let me just explain this to you. So Paul's establishing a church in Ephesus. That's a big deal. Because Ephesus was a huge city of the day. It was roughly about 250,000, that's what experts believe. It was a major uh, center of trade. It was a crossroads between Europe and Asia. It had a huge port. It was one of five free cities Rome recognized, or Rome recognized them as one of five free cities, meaning it was so much like Rome that they didn't have to occupy it. They didn't have to put a garrison of Roman soldiers, kind of keep them, you know, oppressed or anything like that. They're like, wow, Ephesus, you're just like Rome. You're just as immoral as we are. You're just as corrupt as we are. You worship the same gods we worship. Hey, you're just like us. We're friends. We're allies. That's Ephesus. But Paul goes there because God wants to send the gospel to the dark places. Come on, somebody. Paul goes there to plant a church. He plants a church. He starts teaching about it. And who gives him grief over it? The religious crowd. They're starting to argue with him. He started, he's trying to teach or arguing with him. He says, I'm not here to argue with you. You guys do what you want to do. Hey, you have your powerless church. Enjoy. Come and just have your meetings. But there's more to this than that. And so he moves down the street. He goes to a local school, a medical school, and he starts a church. Come on, a lot of churches start the schools, right? He starts a church in the school, not even in the church building. He's like tired of arguing with the religious crowd. So he goes, starts a school. Who wants to learn about the principles and power of God? Come with me. We're going to do this thing, and we're going to build his church on his plan. I'm not going to argue with people that want to do church their way. I'm going to do church the way or, or Jesus' way. And so he starts his church. He goes, he took his disciples with him and dis discussed daily in the lecture hall, the medical school, Tyrannus. This went on for two years, small Small time, two years, church plant in a school, because the other church was going to do its own thing, plant a church in a school, two years. Listen to this. 
so that all, say all, all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Two years, church plant in a school because the real church was arguing with them, wanted to do their thing. They left, and in two years, in the midst of a very corrupt, huge city, just like Rome, if you will, all Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of God. Come on, somebody. Can I tell you, that makes me excited. I don't care what the world looks like today. Kind of had a little bit of rant earlier. That's all right. It doesn't matter to me. Do what you want. We're going to go on. It doesn't matter how big or how small we are or how dark the world is. We're still going to make a difference. This little church in a school that got kicked out of the church, they started, and they reached all the Jews and Greeks in the province. All that. There's a reason why we're going to get there, obviously. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some of the Jews went around, divining spirits, tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed because they saw the power. They saw the power. See, if you fall in line with Jesus' way, you get the power. If you don't, you don't. Right? That's why we got to get lined up with Jesus' way because we want the power. Otherwise, we might as well just have an Amway meeting this morning. Some of you double black diamonds said, come on, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's not what it's about. The church has the power. In other words, let me say it this way. The church has the power and life and light of Jesus. Light was shining in the darkness. Do you realize there's nothing more powerful than the light that is Jesus? Darkness cannot overcome the light. And here in a very dark place, a very small church, just getting started, two years old, got kicked out of the church, all of a sudden, now all this area has heard about Jesus. And they saw signs, wonders, and miracles. I absolutely love that. And believe that's the church we can be. All this in a dark place. The most unlikely of people, the most unlikely of places, yet the light shined and went forth. It goes on to say this, verse, uh, where are we guys? Can we go to verse 13? 13, let's back up to 13. Some of the Jews went around driving out evil spirits, tried to invoke the, the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, they were actually uh, the, the sons of the Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, Paul I know about, but who are you? Isn't it interesting? Because I will bet you that those seven sons of the Jewish priest were followers of Jesus, and yet the enemy says, I don't even know who you are. Isn't it embarrassing that a follower of Jesus would not be known in hell? The devil ought to know your name. The devil ought to know who you are. But here's what I would say this morning. You know who he knew? You know who the devil knew? Disciples, not followers. Come on, go back and listen to last week's message. We're not just talking about being a follower of Jesus. Come on, we can do that and play church all day long. And look what happened. We'll see in a moment to the people that decide to play some church. But he knew the disciples. We got to have a relationship with Jesus ourselves. We got to be known in hell, if you will. We got we got to walk in the authority and power. It's a disciple that walks in the power and authority of Jesus. And so here, here it goes on to say this. It says this in the next verse. Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, all seven, overpowered all seven of them all, and gave them such a beating they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. They ran out naked and afraid. There you go, the first. <laughs> because the followers didn't have the relationship. Come on. It's about being a disciple. We're here disciples making disciples, and we have to have that relationship. He gave them such a beating. I tell you what, man, the enemy will... <laughs> We'll mess with you. You need to know who you are in Christ. You need to be around a place that teaches the word. Come on, somebody. You need to be around a place that believes in the power of God. You need to be connecting with the life and power of God. Amen. In the world we live in today, too many naked and bleeding Christians. I don't mean that ugly. Maybe you just don't understand it or realize it yet. That's okay. We can straighten some of that out today. But listen, there's more to it than that. When this became known, the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear and the name of the Lord was held in high honor. All oh, that the name of the Lord be held in high honor today. Instead of just used in vain. Not important. Can I tell you? They learned. And everybody in that area saw how important and valuable the word of God is. I think a lot of us need to just 
take another look and say, are we holding the word and the things of God in high honor? Not, not the vessel, but the word of God. It is to be held in high honor. We need to have that view of it. Many of them believe came openly and confessed what they had done. A number who practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together. Lives are being changed. You can see I'm turning from my own way, old way. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, they brought all the scrolls together, the, the, the spells and sorcery and all kinds of things that were not of God. They brought them all together and burned them. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. And can I just tell you for a second, I'm laughing every time I'm reading this and I'm studying this because I remember the day that my dad said, son, you need to go get all your rock tapes and all your CDs all your eight tracks, <laughs> all your albums, and we're going to burn them. I don't know if you were here then, but Tree of Life, back in the day when I was in youth group, my dad said, we're going to have a, we're going to burn all, you remember burning all, anybody? Just, okay, no, you, you didn't go to that weird, you just don't want to, you're embarrassed to raise your hand, right? And I'm telling my dad, seriously, dad, I think I spent 50,000 drachmas on my Van Halen collection. I wasn't really sure. I'm like, dad, why do I have to, I'm like, dad, why do I have to, why do I have to burn those? And my dad's like, son, if you just keep listening to that, you're going to be on the highway to hell. And I'm like, Dad, no, I'm climbing the stairway to heaven. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you need to be all in, son. I said, I'm halfway there. I'm living on a prayer. <laughs> I, I had to be honest with him. I said, but I still don't know. What I, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> and he said, son, that's okay. Just don't stop believing. That's it. That's all. <laughs> Hey, hey, I know. <laughs> no, don't clap for that. Do not clap for that. It's embarrassing. But don't you wish you could memorize scripture like you did the 80s rock lyrics? Don't you wish you could do that? Yeah, I can only know scripture like that. And I just, I want to be sensitive. If that kind of upset you this morning, I apologize. It wasn't my intent. But if you want to just give me a call, just you can get me at 837, no, 8675. <laughs> Come on, 8675. Uh-huh, I know you've been listening to that, yeah. <laughs> you can reach me there. Lives are being changed. I'm turning from my old ways, I'm not going back. Lives are being changed, you can see that. And look into this in verse 20. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. New King James Version says of that, it says, the word of God prevailed. It prevailed. The things of God prevailed. What does that sound like? The gates of hell could not stop it could not work to its detriment, could not come out against it. It prevailed. The word of God prevails, amen? The things of God prevails to those who know who they are in Christ. It's important to know that. Light increased. How is that all possible? Light increased and darkness decreased. In fact, let's hear from our founder, audio clip number one. See, the, the, the darkness in this dark place couldn't stop the church from growing and maturing, couldn't stop it from walking Christ-like, couldn't stop it from witnessing Jesus couldn't stop the word that they were sharing and living, touching the hearts of men and drawing them to Christ and getting them saved. It couldn't stop the anointing of the Holy Ghost going forth, praise God, to confirm his word with signs following. It couldn't stop devils from being cast out in the name of Jesus. Darkness could not stop them. This little church wasn't there just in a holding pattern saying, thank God I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, over and out. This church was growing in the things of God. Unashamed of Jesus. Knowing that darkness could not encroach upon them, deter them from whatever God had called them to be personally as a church, and could not withstand them as they began to press against darkness. For what purpose? Just to fight devils? No, to set people free. To save them, deliver them, draw them out of the pit of hell and darkness. Get them healed, deliver, get their families out of dysfunction and abuse. Get them restored, ready for heaven and release. Glory to God to go forth and press against that realm of darkness wherever it be found. Darkness could not stop him. You can clap, that's okay, he'll love it, he'll love it. Darkness could not stop him. This little church got kicked out of the big church because that big church wasn't following the way of Jesus. This church went and followed the plans and purpose of God and look what happened, it changed the whole world around them. I believe that's the tree of life, I believe we can do that. We have to understand that. Darkness cannot stop us. Pandemics cannot stop us. Racism cannot stop us. Politics cannot stop us. That little church plant. Two years. We got 40 years experience. We got 40 years behind this. We need to press against the darkness. The only thing that can hold back the church is the church. The only thing that can hold us back is ourselves. 
Otherwise, it is impossible for darkness to overcome light. I have an illustration I want to show you this morning. And if you've come on Christmas Eve services, you've seen me do this. I love it. And then the context we're talking about, and we'll finish our, our, our message out this morning this way. I have these old lanterns because I think it's just a great way to illustrate this. But as you saw, you heard our founding pastor and talk about the light. And we understand that, that the light can overcome darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. We have the light of Jesus. This is Jesus' church. So we have the light of Jesus. He is the light of the world. He lives in us, and we're to let the light shine. And we let the light shine. The, shine, the, the, the light of Jesus drives out the darkness, and darkness cannot overcome light. Guys, if you'll bring this down, we all know what's going to happen here. Bring the lights down. No matter how much darkness increases, it cannot overcome the light. It is impossible. Oh, if only, church, we would learn that no matter how dark it gets out there, it cannot stop the light. Darkness cannot overcome the light. And we are the light. And we have the light shining in us. You can bring the lights up. We have the light of Jesus in us. So what are we afraid of? Why are we holding back? Because darkness cannot overcome the light. And if we have the light and the life of Jesus living inside of us, why are we afraid at times? Oh, you can diminish the light. I can go up here and turn this little thing here, and I'll, I could diminish the light. I can t dial it down, if you will. I could cover the light. The Bible talks about don't hide it under a bushel because it needs to drive out the darkness. But why would we do that when darkness cannot overcome light? Well, let me say it this way. Why are we afraid to raise our hands in praise and worship? Why are we afraid to sing out boldly and sing with all we have to Jesus? Why are we afraid of sharing Jesus with people in public? Why are we afraid of laying hands on people in H-E-B and Walmart? Why are we afraid of giving our tithes and offerings unto the Lord? Why are we afraid of serving somewhere, someone? Why? Why do we hold back? What's holding you back? I know what's not holding you back, darkness. But pastor, you just don't understand. No, I don't understand what's going on in your life, but here's what I understand that the light drives darkness out. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be insensitive to what you're facing. I got my own stuff. But the light drives it out no matter what it is. Nothing can overcome that. I love that. Something happened to the church in Ephesus, however. Sounds great. They're doing great. Great stuff, but, but something happened. What happened to this church that was changing the world? It doesn't mean darkness prevailed. The church at Ephesus was doing some great things, but something changed, something happened. Their light diminished over time. Darkness did not prevail over the light, but it means the church did not do what it was supposed to do. People did not do what it was supposed to do. Let's take a look at Revelation 1, verse 10. It says, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. This is, this is John now writing. He had a visitation with Jesus. Jesus came to visit him and told him what to write. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, the seven churches in here in the book of Revelation, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. I turned around to see who the voice speaking to me was. Who's saying that to me? And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. Oh, now we're just getting a picture of who's talking to him here. And he's getting his uh, vision of all that too. Dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet was a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was sh shining like the sun in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet, though dead. And he placed his hand, right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. Who's that? Jesus. I'm the living one. Who? Jesus, I was dead. Now look, I'm alive forever and ever. Sounds like Jesus to me, and I hold the keys of death and hell. Who does that sound like? Jesus, who's building his church. You mean that comes from the one who's building the church? Absolutely. So he had a visitation from Jesus, and he's giving instructions for these churches. Right there for what you've seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand. And of the seven golden lampstands is this, and we'll get there in just a second. We'll get there. Hold on, I've got to leave you hanging on the edge for just a second there. Something happened to this, this church in Ephesus and these other churches that came out of it. And so they weren't doing, they, they weren't, it wasn't happening like it was happening before. And so something, their, their light diminished. And so John's writing to them and kind of giving them a warning. It's like, say, hey, I see what's going on here. You're doing some great stuff, man. You're, you're, you're doing all kinds of things, helping people. And things are, you're working hard for sure, but something happened here. And, your light's diminishing, and he begins to, to show what he's talking about here. He gives the warning here. 
basically, it says there's seven lampstands, which are the seven churches listed there, seven lampstands, seven churches. The purpose of a lampstand is to hold a what? Light, come on. Seven churches, which are seven lampstands, and the purpose of a lampstand is to hold the light. The purpose of the church is to hold the light. The church is not the light, but the church holds the light. Come on, church, we hold the light. The light that darkness cannot overcome, you mean? Exactly. We hold the light, the light of Jesus that darkness cannot overcome. And somehow, these churches either forgot or got too busy, caught up in other things, they forgot what they were holding. They were holding the light. Now, understand, they were doing great things. They were working hard and doing all kinds of stuff there, but something happened and they forgot about the light. The lampstand is the church which holds the light. The light makes the difference and drives away the darkness. John's giving a warning. Look what John says to the, the seven churches or lampstands. Let me finish this out. The seven stars, the angels are the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Let's go to Revelation 2. Now we jump on right to the next scripture would be Revelation 2, 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds. Listen here. So here's, what, here's what happened to the church in Ephesus. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you've tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. I know that you have persevered. I know that you have persevered. Can we go, what's the next one? Let's go on. I, yeah. I know you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name's sake and have not grown weary. Well done. Good job. Yet... I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Hold on right there. He's saying, listen, can I say it this way in today's terms? I'm, I'm trying to, I, I gotta get through this. He says this, I see you're doing mega distributions. That's awesome. I see you're delivering home, uh, meals to homes. I see you're doing the bag and a prayer. I see you're doing school supplies. That's amazing. I see you're going out, you're doing serve day. You're doing great stuff. That's awesome. But listen, don't forget your first love. Don't trade the works of the ministry for Jesus, the relationship. He said, you've forsaken the love you had at first. Who is the first love of every believer? Who is the first love of every church? It's Jesus. So somehow, church in Ephesus, all the great things you're doing, that's wonderful. But you have forgotten about your relationship with Jesus. It doesn't. Your works do not replace relationship. I gotta quit young. I gotta do another service. It just kind of dawned right, right there. It's like, come on, thanks for clapping. I had a chance to catch my breath. So get the picture. Because here's the trap we get into we trade works for a relationship. And he's like, that's not how it works. You want the power? You want my presence? You want the light? Then you need the relationship. So what's he saying? Get back to your first love. What is he really talking about? What happens? What, what do we do with our first love and, and our first love being Jesus? You remember when you first got saved? You remember when you heard the gospel that changed your life forever? I, I, I want that. Forgiveness, yes, please, value. I didn't think I could be loved by anybody. I didn't think there was a plan for my life. Thank you for, you paid my debt and you didn't owe it. Thank you. There could be no greater love. I love you. I want to be with you. I want to hear about them. I want to be around them. I want to sing to them. I want to open the book. I want to listen to them. When you first fall in love with that person, you want to spend all your time with them. You want to communicate with them. You want to connect your heart. You want them to hear your heart. You want to hear their heart. Basically, what are we talking about? about here prayer how do you build a relationship with God that's intimate and personal how do you connect your heart to his heart by spending time in prayer by talking to your first love Jesus by talking to your heavenly father and you just spend that time communing with him in his prayer that's our first love it's Jesus how do we build that relationship that intimacy that he wants how do we want to be with him every moment how do we want to hear his heart how do we want him to hear our heart it's it's those moments of prayer what is the oil therefore in our lamps it's prayer it's prayer if you're not a person of prayer you're gonna be empty and you're gonna be dry because it takes prayer to keep the oil in your lamp. We've got to be a people of prayer. If you don't want your, <laughs> thankfully my voice just started to change right now, thankfully, thank you Jesus. If you, don't want, if you don't want your marriage to dry up, you need to be a person of prayer. 
I'm not just talking about praying for your marriage. I'm talking about being a person of prayer, connecting with your first love. God, they're not your first love. Jesus is. If you want your family to be not dysfunctional, you want your family to come together, what's it going to take? Praying about them, having prayer requests for them. Just be a that mom and dad of prayer. What, what is that to everything in our life? It's prayer. What about my job? You need to be a person of prayer. What about my finance? You need to be a person of prayer. Yeah, you need to give. You need to go. You need to go to all the small groups you can. Absolutely. You need to go to Mary for Life. You bet. You need to get involved, get your kids involved. Absolutely. But if you're not keeping oil in your lamp, your light's going to go out. But I'm telling you, the moment you just fall to your knees every day. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The moment you fall to your knees every day, what are you doing? You're putting oil in your lamp. God, help me today. I don't know what to do. God, be with my wife today as she goes. God, be with my kids if they go out to school today. God, I don't know about that meeting at work. I don't know what's going on with my family, with my parents. I don't know. I'm feeling funny in my body. I don't know, Father God, how we're going to make the bills. I don't know. But Lord, I'm just going to spend some time with you today. I'm going to spend time in your presence today, Father God. That's all I know. I'm just going to spend some time. And you know what happens in those moments? All of a sudden, you're starting to put oil in your lamp. All of a sudden, you're starting to fill up with the oil so the light can shine. All of a sudden, that time in prayer, whether you even intentionally meant that to happen or not, that's what happens in prayer. You're filling your oil with, you're filling your lamp with oil. And guess what? Before you know what happens, yeah, your light shines, but what is the result of light shining? Guys, could you bring the lights down again? Could you bring those down again? What is the result of just, just what I said? Just as simple as what I just said here a minute ago. God, help me today. Be with my wife today. Be with my kids today. Help me in that meeting. Help me at work. What am I doing? I put an oil in my lamp. And what, is, what happens when there's oil in my lamp? The light can shine. And what does light do? It drives out darkness. It drives out the darkness in your mind. It drives the darkness out in your marriage. It drives the darkness out in your family, in your day. And all you did was go to the, your first love. Can you bring the lights up, please? Uh, all you did was go spend time with your first love. That's all you did. Just you as you are. You didn't have to have a prayer list. You didn't have to have 10 scriptures. You didn't have to have all this. You just went to spend time with your first love. What are you going to do today? Uh, before I go to get, do anything, I'm just going to spend time with my first love. Sorry, honey, it's not you. And they should be good, because you're not mine either. It's God through his son, Jesus. So, he's, so get the picture. Here's this church plant in a school rejected by a church that man decided they had a better way in one of the darkest places on the planet, just like Rome. And all of a sudden, in two years, that little church meeting in a school had spread the gospel to everyone in that province. Signs, wonders, and miracles were happening. The church was growing, and darkness could not overcome it. Why? Because darkness cannot overcome light. So the church is the lamps, lampstand, which holds the light. Church isn't the light that holds the light. Who is that? All of God's people that have the light of Jesus in them. People of prayer, people that are connecting with their first love. And that's what we're talking about. See, we have to be a people of prayer. <laughs> Not just praying over your meal. <laughs> Not just praying when you come to church. You gotta be a person of prayer every day of your life. You just, what do you do? You just, you talk to your first love like you would talk to your first love. I, I, I don't got to give you 10 points. I'm not going to do a series on how to pray. I will at one point in time, but not in this context. Is you just spend time with your first love. That's what John said. Don't forget. Go back to your first love. Because, you know, the reality is it's easy to get caught up in life. Even if good things are, I love that we do mega food distributions every month. And hundreds and hundreds of families, I, I, I helped deliver 115 families food boxes. I helped deliver four. I, I did my part. I, I, I love that. But none of that matters if we're not being a church of prayer. None of that matters if we're not being people of prayer. Because it's prayer that keeps oil in your lamp. And it's the oil that keeps the light shining. I said, my house is to be called a house of prayer. This church is, has been, is, and will be a house of prayer. And I just want to encourage you all, be a people of prayer. The measure of a great church, or the, the greatness of a church, if I could say it that way, 
is measured by the prayers of its people. And we will be people of prayer. And if I could just go ahead and obviously say, that's one of the reasons why we have 21 days of prayer. You can either join us in person or join us online, but pray. Nothing happens without prayer. This is the last week, running the last week, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. online or here. Let's finish strong. If you haven't joined us yet, join us. Let's finish strong. This coming Saturday is our last Saturday of 21 days of prayer, but we have prayer every Saturday at 9 a.m. for what happens here on Sunday. What are we doing? We're praying for services, yeah? What are we doing? We're filling our lamps with oil. Why? Because light drives out darkness. So, see, so understand this. If we come here every Sunday not looking to get our lamp full, but already having our lamp full, then you're driving, your light is driving the darkness out of people who have been lost and hurting and come in darkness. Come on, somebody. That is the church that we want to be. Amen? Amen. All right, I need to, I need to close. I need to close. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, that's, just, that's our heart. You are our first love. But here's what we know. We're your first love. I mean, that, it's one thing to say, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, God's our first love. Yeah, why, why wouldn't he be? But Father, to sit here and know that we're your first love. How can we not love you? You're God and you sent your son and you, you paid the price and you love us unconditionally. Even you know everything about us, but Father, for us to say that that God loves me just as I am and all my mistakes and all my sin and all my brokenness that you love me. I'm still your first love no matter what I do. You still love me. You love me first. You love me so much that you sent Jesus to pay for my sins so that you and I could have a relationship. That's where it all starts. So on the chance this morning or somebody watching us online, if you cannot remember a moment in time that you've invited Jesus to come in and be the Savior of your life, to be the Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been around church, played church. We already saw what playing church, how that can result in. Maybe you've been in church your whole life around church people. But if you're here today or online and you would say, "Then I need Jesus to come into my life and change me. I want to invite him in. Where old things are passed away, all things have become new. I know, I now know that I am his first love. And I want to receive them. In just a few moments, I'm going to pray a prayer of commitment. I'm not going to have anybody stand. If you're here, I'm not going to have anybody come up front. I'm just going to ask you to do something simple, whether you're here with us on the property or at home. If that's you and you'd say, Pastor, could you include me in that commitment prayer? Would you just raise your hand this morning? Just raise your hand. Just raise it. Just raise it up. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for those hands. If you're at home, raise your hand. If you're the only one in the room, raise your hand. I think it's important to have an outward expression of what you're feeling on the inside. If you're at home and you have other people with, ask everybody in the room. Ask everybody in that room if they've prayed this prayer and asked Jesus in yet. Maybe you could say this morning, that Pastor, I've prayed that prayer, but it seems like he's a million miles away. Well, let me encourage you. He will never leave you or forsake you. But sometimes we get caught up in life, and it's understandable. Life's changing. Life is pulling on us. Life is loud, and life is right there in our face. Sometimes we even unintentionally get distracted. Maybe we're even just doing good things. And like we described, maybe you got caught up on all the, all the work and not the person. Maybe you got caught up in doing things for God instead of being with God. Maybe that's you this morning, whether you're here or at home. And if you would say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer, but I need to make an adjustment this morning. I need to make a course of direction, a correction rather. And if that's you, we might say rededicate, recommit. If that's you and you say, Pastor, could you include me in that prayer? Can I just see your hand this morning as well? If you're here in the house, if you're at home, just lift that hand. Thank you, thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. If you're at home again, raise, if you're, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Amen. All right, and put your hands down. Look up for another moment. As I said, I'm going to pray a prayer of commitment. But please understand the power in the prayer is when you attach your heart to it. Because I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And many of you have heard this over and over, and you, you could do it without me even saying it. I get it. I do that for a reason. But listen, the power in the prayer is attaching your heart to the words. Don't let them be my words through your mouth. Let them be your words from your mouth to the heart of God, your heart to his heart. So I'm going to ask everyone to pray this prayer with me, whether you raise your hand or not. Let's all pray together. 
I'll just let it come from our heart to the heart of God. Let him do what only he can do, change and transform us from the inside out. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus is your son, sent to the earth to die on a cross, to pay for my sin, and then go to a grave and rise again in victory. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for dying. Thank you for paying for my sin. And thank you for rising again so I can be free. So Jesus, I ask you now, come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everybody. Come on, somebody, let's celebrate. God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He's got a great plan for your life. Tree of Life Church, let's keep our lamp full. Come on, let's drive out the darkness in Jesus' name. Change our world. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's all stand to our feet. Don't forget as you get ready to leave today. Man, come back next week. We're going to wrap it up. Super excited. Everything's going to be kind of just brought together, kind of come together next Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Join us online. If you can't be with us in person, invite somebody to come. Send them the link. We're going to, we're going to have a, a morning of, of worship and celebration and filling our lamps and just having a great time with the Lord. Don't forget the keychain out there for you. We love you. We'll see you next week. Let's worship as we go. You are dismissed.